السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, Good morning everybody إن شاء الله uh, Today uh, we are going to continue uh, the chapter of uh, solutions that we uh, started in uh, the last lecture uh, and today we will uh, cover uh, a topic uh, related to the properties uh, of solutions uh, the properties that uh, probably uh, are uh, changed when you add uh, an non-volatile solid to a solvent or the addition even of a volatile solid to a solvent. In the last lecture, uh, we mentioned that the solutions uh, can be composed of uh, two different materials uh, of different faces or even of the same faces, right? Uh, so today we will uh, inspect the change that uh, that is possibly happened uh, for the properties of the solvents, for the properties of sol solvents. If you add, for example, uh, a spoon of uh, a given salt, a non-volatile salt to water. Uh, well, uh, the properties of water remain unchanged, or will these properties change? Okay, that we will see in today's lecture, inshallah. And we will uh, call the properties that. Uh, will be changed by the addition of a solid to a solvent as a colligative properties, as colligative properties, okay? Uh, let us, uh, at the beginning, uh, imagine uh, the addition of uh, antifreezers to water in a car's cooling system, okay? Uh, they always advise not to add uh, pure water to the cooling system. They advise always to add antifreezers, a material uh, which is basically a, a solution, a, a mixture of water with some some other material like ethylene glycol or another material. The uh, the idea uh, behind uh, the addition of antifreezers is basically to prevent the uh, freezing of water in uh, winter and also to increase the boiling point of water in summer, okay? To avoid in, in the hot areas, sometimes the temperatures go to uh, uh, 40 something or even to 50 in, uh, in sun, uh, but in the engine, it might go much, much higher, okay? So uh, uh, water uh, will uh, will possibly be uh, vaporized, and that will damage the, the, the engine. So they are trying to uh, increase the boiling point of water. That can be done, as we will see, by adding uh, uh, some uh, non-volatile material or even less volatile than water uh, to water by mixing both materials together the same way for the uh, in the, 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 the cold areas sometimes uh, temperature may go to uh, the freezing uh, to uh, zero degrees Celsius and that will freeze the water in the cooling system if you bought only water but if you add the antifreezer which is a mixture of water with a non-volatile or a less volatile material that will shift the boiling, uh, the, the, the melting point of water to less than zero degrees Celsius at one atmosphere. Okay, we will see this in detail uh, in today's lecture. Uh, the same phenomena for adding, uh, for spreading salts when it, uh, uh, when it, uh, when it is snowing in uh, some uh, areas or uh, in case of. Uh, uh, of having uh, ice on the on the floor, okay. 
So you see them in the, the TV, they spread salts everywhere. Why they are spreading salts? To uh, make a solution with the ice, uh, and that will decrease or depress the freezing point. Instead of zero, if the, the, the atmosphere is zero, uh, water is supposed to be frozen, right? But if you add salt, that will melt the ice because it changed the, the freezing point to less than zero. Okay, so if the, the temp temperature is zero, then it is supposed to be uh, in a liquid phase, in a liquid phase, and, and, and this is a process of melting, of melting the water everywhere. The same way, uh, the same phenomena, uh, is because of the colligative properties, changing the properties of the liquids uh, by the addition of a non-volatile or a less volatile solute to the solvent, to water, okay? Yes. In the freezer as well. Yeah, 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 to decrease, but, but, but uh, the, uh, adding a salt to the freezer uh, may uh, form also a solution with the water vapor, okay? And that may decrease also the, 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 the melting point, okay? Uh, but but you, you need to add the, the, the salt directly to, to ice or to liquid water, okay? Okay, so uh, this is uh, the, the colligative properties, and the, these properties are actually depending only on the concentration of the salt you add, not the identity of the salt. So if you add, for example, uh, urea to water, uh, it might work uh, the same way as if you add uh, glucose or if you add sodium chloride. So uh, the changes that they will uh, uh, inspire depend on the amount of the, the salt you added or on the concentration you added of the salt, not on the identity of the, of the salt, okay? So these properties depend only on the concentration or the number of the particles of solute you added uh, and do not depend on the identity of the salt. So uh, the addition of the same concentration of urea and the glucose to a given amount of water will have the same effect. The impact will be, will be the same, okay? These uh, properties that uh, you will observe uh, uh, for solvents, uh, or the, the well change for the solvents are basically uh, uh, lowering in the vapor pressure. Number two, the boiling uh, point elevation. Number three, the depression of the freezing point. And we will see uh, the last one is uh, osmotic pressure generation. Okay. Uh, so well, let us start uh, at the beginning. Uh, by uh, lowering the vapor uh, pressure. As I said, uh, the solutions, even of, uh, or uh, any solvent at uh, room temperature, it will have uh, a vapor pressure, a vapor, even at room temperature. The process of vaporization is uh, running even at uh, room temperature. And of course, if you increase the temperature, the vapor pressure will, will increase. How about the vapor pressure for solution, which is a mixture of uh, a solvent and a solute? Okay. Non volatile. Non volatile is a material uh, which has no tendency to be vaporized, to be vaporized. like uh, sodium chloride. This is a solid material, solid salt. It has no vapor pressure. Okay. But uh, volatile materials like water, like uh, ethanol, and they, of course, have different volatility, okay? Based on the, the, the nature of the material, the nature of the material itself, okay? 
So the dissolution of non-volatile solute in a solvent decreases the number of solvent molecules per unit volume. Look at this image here. This is a pure solvent, okay? Uh, if you mix uh, a non-volatile solute, which is the orange particles here with uh, the uh, so solvent particles, which, is, uh, which are green in color, okay? So the, 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 the area of uh, or uh, the, the, the number of solvent molecules per unit volume in the solution will decrease. And that, of course, will decrease the, uh, the escaping tendency of the solvent molecules to the gas phase. Will decrease the escaping tendency uh, of the gas uh, particles to the, to the, uh, of the, 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 the solvent particles to the gas phase. And that definitely will decrease the vapor pressure, will decrease the vapor. If you also uh, look, to the interaction between the solvent and the solid, that will also decrease the tendency of escaping of the solvent uh, molecule to the gas phase, and uh, eventually the vapor pressure will be lowered, will get lowered, okay? So uh, one of the interesting features for adding uh, a, a non-volatile solid to a given uh, solvent is to decrease the, the its vapor pressure at the same temperature, decreasing the vapor pressure. And actually, all other uh, properties will depend uh, principally on this uh, feature, on this uh, effect, on this change. Uh, because, you know, the boiling point will depend on the vapor pressure. You remember in the last time, uh, if you heat up a given solvent, uh, Basically, what you are doing is to you are increasing the vapor pressure until the vapor pressure of the solvent become exactly the same as the external pressure. At that temperature, the, the solvent will start to be boiled, right? So this is the boiling. This is the idea of the boiling. So basically, what you are doing now, we are decreasing the vapor pressure by making a solution, decreasing the vapor pressure. So by default, you will expect that you need to heat up the solution to a higher temperature than the boiling point of the pure solvent to inspire a new boiling for the solution. Is this right? Can you imagine it? Okay, so you need to go up. So this is the reason for the boiling point elevation for the solution, okay? Uh, the same way for the formation, uh, for the melting point, for the melting point, the melting point is basically an, a state of equilibrium between the liquid and the solid, right? And the, the, the definition of the melting point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid equal to the vapor pressure of the solid. So basically, uh, during uh, freezing, for example, the, the liquid particles, are trying to uh, to uh, align in the crystal lattice of the solid, right? Uh, if this is pure solvent, this is a pure solvent, uh, like uh, liquid water is trying to form the ice crystal, okay? So liquid water can uh, get frozen uh, by uh, moving from the liquid phase to the, to the uh, the solid state, right? Uh, based on the temperature, uh, the tendency of uh, going from the liquid to the crystal lattice uh, will be justified. So if you are at zero degrees Celsius, that will be different from if you are at minus five degrees Celsius, for example, okay? The addition of a non-volatile solid will encounter will encounter the, the process of going from the liquid to the, to the solid state. So you need to go to lower temperatures to force the, the, the solvent particles to go to the, to form the solid crystals of the solvent. So uh, as well, the temperature uh, of uh, freezing is supposed to be, to be lowered for solutions 
than for pure pure sulfur. Okay, so uh, this is uh, uh, Raoult's law that uh, estimate the uh, change in the vapor pressure based on the quantity of the dissolved solid in a given solution. So the, the, the rule is the vapor pressure of the solution is proportional to the uh, mole fraction of the solvent, of the solvent. I, I want you to notice this uh, important uh, notation because this is uh, the, the first time you, you observe that we are uh, uh, paying attention to the mole fraction of solvent, not the solid, not the solid, okay? Because actually the vapor pressure will uh, basically result from the, the solvent, not the solid, okay? So basically the vapor pressure of the solution will uh, depend principally on the mole fraction of the, of the solvent. And if you uh, remove the uh, proportionality sign, you bought uh, a constant here, which is the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, of the pure solvent. Uh, I want to ask you now, according to the, this rule, if x of the solvent equal to 1, what does it mean? Equal 1. If x of the solvent equal to 1. Yes, equal to 1. If the mole fraction equal to one, what do you think about this? Is it a solution or a pure solvent? Solution or pure solvent? A pure solvent. If x equal to one, this is a pure solvent. There is nothing other than the pure solvent. If x equal to one, then p solution will equal to b not solvent. It's a pure vapor pressure of the solvent. So the rule is correct. The rule is, is correct. But by the addition of uh, solute to the, the, the solvent, <coughs> <coughs> this X is supposed to, to decrease than one, right? And of course, the B solution will also decrease, will also. So the rule is applied, and this is called Raoult's law, and it ex with Raoult's law, you can estimate the vapor pressure, vapor pressure of the solution based on the composition of the solution in the liquid phase, in the liquid phase. What is the difference between Raoult's law and the Dalton's law? Do you remember Dalton's law? Dalton's law that we, uh, we studied in the gas, uh, chapter, it also gave uh, some information about the vapor pressure or the gas pressure, but based on the composition of the solutions or, uh, or the gas in the gas phase, in the gas phase, not in the solution phase, not in the, the liquid phase, okay? And today, maybe in the, in the, by the end of the lecture, we will mix both of them to understand the idea of distillation. Raoult's law with Dalton's law. But right now, I want you to uh, appreciate that Raoult's law correlates the vapor pressure of the solution to the composition of the uh, solution in the liquid phase, in the liquid phase, not in the gas. We do not care about the gas composition now. But we are caring about the, the, the solution composition. The solution composition. Okay? Okay. Uh, exercise. Calculate the expected vapor pressure uh, for a solution prepared by dissolving a uh, given amount of uh, common uh, table sugar, sugar and, uh, which is sucrose. And this is a, a molar mass of sucrose in this volume of water at uh, 25 degrees Celsius and is giving the density of water and the vapor pressure of pure water at that, at that temperature. So we, we need to apply Raoult's law and Raoult's law uh, requires to calculate the mole fraction of the solvent. How can we calculate the mole fraction of the solvent? We need first to estimate the number of moles of both materials, the water and 
the uh, sucrose, right? So uh, uh, do we have the available information to calculate the mole fraction? What are the available information now? The available information, the first one for uh, sucrose, the available information, this is the mass of sucrose. And this is the molar mass. If you divide the mass by the molar mass, this is the number of moles of sucrose. How about for water? For water. For water is giving here the volume of water. This is the volume. And this is the density of water. With the volume and density. Can you calculate the mass? You can calculate it. If you calculate the mass and then you divide the mass by the molar mass of water, which is 18, you should. Uh, memorize this uh, value, okay? If you uh, make th this uh, division, okay, then you got the number of moles of water. If you have the number of moles of sucrose, number of moles of water, then it is very easy to calculate the mole fraction of what? Of sucrose or of water. Which one? Which one? Which one we need to, to calculate to apply for Raoult's law? The, the, the mole fraction of water or of, of sucrose? Which one? Of water. Because we are, we, we care about the solvent. We care about the solvent. Okay. You should be familiar with this. Uh, I, I, I should uh, attract your attention to this uh, point because this is the tricky point in the exam. Okay. okay. Uh, yes. Oh yeah, uh, this is the density of, uh, this is the volume of water. So you divide, uh, you, uh, you multiply actually the, 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 the density, uh, with the volume to calculate the mass. Divided by 18, yes. Yes. Okay, and this is a procedure, the number of moles of sucrose. Uh, this is 0 0.4, uh, mole. And this is the number of moles of water. As I said, you multiply the volume uh, with the density, and then you divide by 18 to be uh, 35.6 moles. And then you calculate from Raoult's law the vapor pressure of the solution, which is uh, 23.46. This is actually lower than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, which is 23.76. Uh, and this is uh, uh, results of uh, lowering uh, the vapor pressure of the of the solvent by adding the sucrose to to water. Okay. Uh, this was the addition of uh, a non-volatile solid to a sol a volatile solvent. How about mixing of two volatile two volatile solvents? Uh, with different volatility, different degree of volatilization, okay? This is what we will inspect in this slide. Uh, first of all, if you remember uh, in the last lecture, in the formation of solvent, formation of solution, we mentioned that we have two different cases for the formation of ideal solution and for non-ideal solution. Did you... Uh, do you remember the uh, distinction between the ideal and the non-ideal solutions? You remember uh, for the calculations of delta H for ideal solution, what was the value of delta H for ideal solutions? It was zero. As I said uh, in the last lecture, the, uh, the energy that you need uh, to add to separate the solvent particles and the solid particles are exactly the same as the energy that will be released when the solid particles interact with the, with the solvent particles. If the, both of them are the same, because we, when we calculate delta H of solution, we take the summation of delta H1 and the delta H2 and the delta H3. One and the two are uh, endothermic, and the delta H3 is exothermic for the formation of solution the overall or the summation of the three of them, if they are uh, or, or if they equal to zero, this will be an ideal solution. Ideal solution. Other than this, we are talking about non-ideal solution. If, uh, either delta H is uh, negative or positive, but, but I said it, 
is it is supposed to be a, a lower value, lower value, not a, a big, a big value. Okay, this is uh, for for the solution. Uh, well, here uh, I mean by ideal solutions that delta h will equal to zero. Delta h will equal to to zero. Okay, uh, in that case, both liquids are volatile, and the both of them they obey Raoult's law. Both of them they obey Raoult's. Law. This is. Uh, in this image, if this is the liquid one and this is the vapor pressure of liquid one at a given temperature, and if this is the liquid two or liquid B, and this is the vapor pressure uh, at the same temperature, then if you make a solution uh, of A and B, that will be the vapor pressure uh, or the, the, the concentration of the gas particles at the same temperature. Uh, uh, look at liquid one here. How many particles in the gas phase here? These are six. You, sh uh, you should find here also six. And these are in liquid B are four. Also here at the same temperature will be four. This is an ideal behavior. Ideal behavior. The mixing of A and B did not affect the degree of volatility of both liquids. This is the ideal behavior. And this is actually not the rare case. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, some oils may, may be volatile. Okay, they can be vaporized. If you left sodium chloride uh, in an open uh, atmosphere, okay, uh, you, you, it will not uh, be vaporized, right? But vo volatile uh, materials, if you left it today in the open atmosphere, tomorrow you will not find the same amount, okay? So it has a tendency to escape to the gas phase, okay? Now, uh, these uh, two liquids, A and B, are volatile, okay? But uh, I, I think you, uh, you appreciated now the, uh, the case of the ideal solution that the, the addition of both liquids will not affect the value of the vapor pressure of uh, both of them if they existed alone, okay? And, and of course, if you look to these uh, masses over liquid A, these are two uh, masses, okay? And for liquid B, this is one, which reflects the vapor pressure uh, or the pressure of liquid A and liquid B when we mix it A and the B together, you look here, we have three of this uh, mass, okay? Uh, so basically, there is no uh, deviation from the ideal behavior. There is no deviation from the ideal behavior. And you can apply your old slow in that uh, form. Uh, the total pressure equal to BA plus BB and BA equal to XA, BA node, where XA is the mole fraction of, of material A, which is volatile. The same way BB will equal to XB, B naught B, uh, and the XB is the mole fraction of, of the uh, material B, okay? So this is the case of ideal solutions, ideal solution. And uh, as I said, ideal behavior is something uh, which is not real, which is not A, okay? Now, uh, if we want to uh, design what is called uh, a vapor pressure composition diagram, vapor pressure, as I said, the vapor pressure will depend on the composition, right? According to Raoult's law. Now, let us investigate uh, the case of the uh, adding two volatile materials together, A and B, okay? Uh, and we want to design the vapor pressure composition diagram, which is actually representing the relationship of the vapor pressure based on the composition, either of A or B, okay? If you look here at this point, we have 0% A and 100% B. So at this point, the vapor pressure is basically of pure B, of pure B, because we have 100% B. If you move this way, this way, uh, the, 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 the composition of A increase and the composition of B decrease until you go to the end of this diagram. At that, we have here 100% A and at 
on the y axis here we will have the vapor pressure of pure pure air <coughs> okay <clears throat> so this is the uh, the way we design this diagram the vapor pressure uh, as you see here which will have the higher vapor pressure b or a according to this diagram which will b of higher vapor pressure b or a b of course okay uh, what do you think uh, which is more volatile b or a b or a more volatile b as well because uh, as the vapor pressure increase the material will be more volatile right what do you expect which will be of higher boiling point B or A? B or A? B or A? A? A will be of higher boiling point because as the material uh, become less volatile, you need to go to higher temperature to boil, right? So you should connect all these features together, okay? Okay? Uh, I'm trying to give you the, the way we ask, okay? Okay, so the vapor pressure uh, uh, can uh, give you information about the boiling. About the, so, if you want to design uh, another diagram right now uh, for the boiling point composition diagram, uh, the position of B will be lower and the position of A will be higher. Okay, okay, yes. Uh, based on the title here, here I'm writing vapor pressure. If I change, if I give you this diagram in the exam and I ask you to design the boiling point uh, composition diagram, so you, you, you will have an idea which one will be lower and which one will be higher. Okay, this is your uh, rule. Okay, and as you see, uh, as, you saw, as you saw in the exam, the exam is uh, very easy but uh, you need to be uh, uh, alert for every single word okay it's very simple very simple oh man they are uh, the difficulty is in your side <laughs> it will be multiple choice yes okay uh, Okay, so this is uh, the, the vapor pressure of pure B, and this is the vapor pressure of pure A. According to Raoult's law, the vapor pressure of the solutions in between, in between here, okay, will be midway between the vapor pressure of pure B and the vapor pressure of pure, of pure A. But let us, at the beginning, let us, at the beginning, uh, uh, investigate the, 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 the partial pressure of A uh, alone, alone. As I said, uh, B total will equal to BA plus BB, which is the uh, uh, summation of vapor pressure of, uh, partial pressure of A and the partial pressure of B. How about the partial pressure of A? How can we calculate it? Also, according to Raoult's law, partial pressure of A will equal to XA B node A. Okay? So, as as the composition of A increases in this way, the vapor pressure of A will increase in that way. Okay? So if you want only to calculate the partial pressure of A, it increased from zero to the maximum value, which is the vapor pressure of pure A, when XA equal to one, when XA equal to two one, the vapor pressure of A, the partial pressure of A will equal to the, uh, the vapor pressure of pure A, okay? The same apply for B, partial pressure of B. So this is the line of the partial pressure of B. How about the partial pressure of the, the, the solution, which is the summation of partial pressure of A and the partial pressure of B at a given composition. So at any, any composition here, you can go this way up and you get this value and you get this value and you add both together to get a given value here for the solution okay so if you did this you you will see this diagram this is the b solution at several compositions if you connect all of them together you will get this line and this line will represent the vapor pressure of the solution 
which is basically the summation of PA and, and the BB. And so far, we are talking about ideal solutions. Ideal solutions mean that if you add the vapor pressure of the first material, to the vapor pressure of the second material, that will give you the vapor pressure of the solution. This is the ideal behavior. Non-ideal behavior is something different. We will see now. Okay, we will have deviation from this uh, consistency with Raoult's law. Okay, so this is the uh, vapor pressure of the solution. Uh, for non-ideal solutions, as I said, uh, you will observe deviation from from Raoult's law, and this deviation can be negative or positive. Okay, for negative deviation, this. Uh, actually, an identity uh, a case for when the solvent has a special affinity to solid. The same way as we described in the last lecture, if the bonding between solid and the solvents are stronger than the bonding in the solid particles and the bonding in the solvent particles, okay, delta H will be negative, as I said in the last lecture, because this. A special affinity between the solid and the solvent. So when they interact so strongly, you expect that the vapor pressure will be lowered, right? Right. The tendency of scaping the solvent will be lowered, lower than expected, lower than expected. And that's why we are saying this is negative deviation because the vapor pressure will be lower, will be lower, okay? And the example for this is the interaction between acetone and the water. Because of hydrogen bonding, you expect that we will have a negative deviation. We will have, and the, 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 the other case is for positive deviation. When solvent has no affinity to interact with solid, and in that case, we expect that delta H will be positive. Delta H will be positive, and the vapor pressure will be, will be higher, will be higher for the solution. The vapor pressure, because there is no interaction between the solid and the solvent particles, okay? So we will expect uh, that the solid solvent interaction is weaker than impure, impure liquids. Again, for the negative deviation, uh, the vapor pressure will be lower than predicted by Raoult's law, and delta H will be negative, and this is actually exothermic solutions, uh, or uh, delta H will be negative for the formation of solution. The opposite is true for for the positive deviation, where the observed vibration will be higher than predicted by Raoult's law, and delta H will be positive, and th that means that the, the fo solution formation is endothermic. Is endothermic. You should connect all these features together, okay? For non-ideal solution, uh, so this table will summarize the case for the ideal and the non-ideal solution, okay? For uh, 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 benzene and toluene, for example, the mixing of benzene and toluene, uh, delta H uh, equal to zero because uh, actually the forces between the solids and between the solvent are very similar to the bonding between uh, the solid and solvents after the formation of solution. Uh, and acetone and the water are example uh, for the negative deviation and uh, negative deviation from the ideal behavior. And the ethanol and the hexan is uh, a good example for the positive deviation, <coughs> which will have <coughs> delta H positive, delta H positive. Okay, for negative deviation, this is the shape for the vapor pressure composition diagram. And instead of having the straight line here for the vapor pressure of the solution, or even the straight lines for the partial pressures of A and B, you will observe that the uh, experimental values of the vapor pressure are lower than expected by Raoult's law. Are lower than expected. Uh, and this is the negative deviation. Vapor pressure will be lower for uh, the negative deviation. Okay? And for positive deviation, the vapor pressure will be higher for the solution. And for the partial pressures of both materials, the vapor pressure will be, will be higher. So 
to summarize this, this is the case of ideal solution. And this is the case of negative deviation. And this is the third case of the positive deviation. Okay? So now we uh, uh, realized the, uh, the different cases according to the vapor pressure composition diagram. Okay? Exercise. A solution is prepared by mixing uh, 5.81 uh, gram acetone uh, and 11.9 uh, uh, gram chloroform at uh, 35 degrees and this solution has a total vapor pressure of uh, 260. Is this an ideal solution? He is giving here the vapor pressure of the solution, 260. This is the real vapor pressure of the solution. And is asking now, is this an ideal solution? Okay, so you should ignore this value at the beginning and you calculate the total vapor pressure according to Raoult's law. If they are the same, so this will be an ideal solution. If the calculated value by Raoult's law is higher than the experimental, so the experimental is lower, lower than the calculated by Raoult's law. If it is lower than the calculated by Raoult's law, then we will have negative deviation. If the opposite uh, case, in the opposite case, it will be a positive deviation. So this is the, the way we think about the calculations here. So we want to calculate the value of the total pressure according to Raoult's law. How can we calculate this? Actually, in the, in the, in the problem here uh, is giving you the vapor pressure of pure acetone and the pure chloroform at the same temperature. So we want to calculate, this is uh, interaction and this is uh, hydrogen bonding between uh, acetone and the chloroform. So you expect with this hydrogen bonding that we will have a negative deviation. We'll have, the, this is an expectation at the beginning, but we did not calculate yet the, the value. Uh, now we calculate the, the number of moles of acetone and number of moles of chloroform very simply. And then you calculate X of acetone and the X of uh, chloroform. Uh, by the way, if you calculate the X of acetone uh, as they are, uh, two materials, you can just uh, directly uh, substitute uh, here in this formula to calculate X of chloroform because as I said, the summation of mole fractions in a given solution should equal to one, equal to, to one. And then you calculate B total. He calculated B total. It was higher than the experimental value. So the experimental value is lower than expected by Raoult's law. So will we have a negative or positive deviation? Have a negative deviation, okay? Now, this is the phase diagram. Uh, you remember the phase diagram that we studied before for liquid water? This is the shape of the phase diagram. Uh, at the beginning, we justify the important values here. This is the zero Celsius, and this is the 100. This is the melting point of pure water at one atmosphere. This is the boiling point of uh, liquid water at one atmosphere, and this, uh, and this is one atmosphere on the y-axis. And this is the shape of the phase diagram of water, right? Uh, and here we have a solid state, here we have liquid state, here we have gas state, okay? Everything is, uh, is mentioned in this diagram for the pure, for the pure uh, water. How about if you added a non-volatile solid to a pure water? What will you observe for this diagram? Okay, as I said, the vapor pressure will be lowered, will be lowered for all, for all temperatures, for all temperatures, the vapor pressure will be, will be lower, and that will shift the line of the, uh, separating the solid liquid phases to lift. Okay, and uh, this line will result here between liquid and the gas will also shift to lower to lower position. This is the, the, the new phase diagram for the solution of water and the non-volatile non-volatile solids. Okay? 
So I want you to observe this lowering in vapor pressure here. This lowering in vapor pressure between pure water and 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 the the, the solution. And and that will affect the melting point and will affect the boiling point. Look at this uh, point here is a zero uh, degrees. Less. This is the freezing point of pure pure water, right? Okay, so this is the, the conversion from the solid to the liquid at one atmosphere, at one atmosphere. How about the new melting point? Is it lower or higher than zero? Lower, okay? So this is the lowering in vapor, in, uh, lowering in freezing point, okay? Because of the addition of a non-volatile solid to the, to the solvent, okay? Uh, and this value is basically delta Tf. Delta Tf is the freezing point depression. The freezing point depression. This is not a freezing point. This is the depression. Is this a difference? Is this a difference? If I, if, if this is zero and this is, uh, minus one. Minus one. What is the value of the depression? Is one degree. Is one degree. Right? Okay. Uh, so, so we calculate here the difference, delta Tf, the difference between the, the, the new freezing and the old freezing or the original freezing of the pure solvent. Okay. How about the uh, effect of the boiling point? This is 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of pure, of pure water at one atmosphere. How about the new boiling of the solution? The new boiling is, is here, is up here. Is it higher or lower? Is higher, is higher. And this is also is the, the difference uh, or the, the boiling point elevation, the boiling point elevation, okay? If this is 100 and the new one uh, is uh, 100.1, uh, 100.1, so the difference is, Point 0.1. The difference, which is delta Tb, is point 0.1. Only point 0.1. So we are uh, concerning with the difference. With the, with the difference. Okay? So an volatile solid lowers the vapor pressure. The solid liquid interface moves to left. Uh, here you observe that there is no change in this line between the solid and the gas. Because actually, we do not have a uh, liquid phase, uh, which is the uh, uh, the, 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 the target for uh, the, the vapor pressure or the, the, the effect will be very high for the liquid, for the liquid state. Okay. So for the solid gas interface, no effect is not changing. Okay. Uh, so this is the boiling point elevation, uh, and is defining now the normal boiling point, the temperature at which the vapor is equal to one atmosphere. Uh, the addition of an volatile solid will increase uh, the vapor uh, will uh, uh, will uh, increase the boiling point actually, and this is uh, because the addition of a non-volatile solid to a pure solvent, uh, the vapor pressure of the solvent will decrease. And I describe this when you increase the vapor pressure, you need to go to higher temperature to uh, inspire the boiling more than uh, what you need for a pure a pure solvent. Okay. Uh, uh, in the next slide, we will have a formula to calculate the degree of elevation or the degree of depression. But before we go to this slide, uh, I want to uh, attract your attention that the effect that you will see for the elevation of boiling point and the depression of the freezing point depend on the uh, the nature of the solute. If you dissolve it, a given solid in the solution, will it uh, get ionized or not ionized? Because we uh, actually, we concern with the number of particles in the solution, not before adding the solution. To differentiate between the both cases, if you add one mole of sodium chloride to uh, water, uh, sodium chloride will get ionized 
to one mole of sodium ions and one mole of chloride ions. So one mole will dissociate or will ionize to two moles. This is, will be different from the case of sucrose. If you dissolve one mole of sucrose, it will become also one mole of sucrose without dissociation. So the dissociation will, 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 will also affect the change in the properties, the change in the properties. And, and that will be reflected in that factor, which is the Van to Hoff, Van to Hoff factor. Uh, gives a relationship between the number of moles of solid dissolved and the number of particles in the solution. Okay, so I equal to the moles of particles in solution to moles of uh, solid dissolved. And this table describes the cases of sodium chloride. I equal to two uh, potassium sulfate. How many ions here in potassium sulfate? Two potassium and one sulfate. So I equal to three. Okay, for iron phosphate, how many particles we have? Five, okay, three for iron and the two for phosphate, okay? So this is the way that we will think about the Van to Hoff uh, factor or the ionization factor, the ionization. For glucose, I equal to one because it is not ionizable. It is not ionizable, okay? So for the uh, boiling point elevation, which is delta Tb, it will equal to I, which is the ionization factor, uh, or Van to Hoff factor uh, times uh, the molality of the solid, molality. You remember from the last time, what is the definition of molality? It's the number of moles of solid in one kg of solvent, for one kg in solvent. And if you remove the proportionality factor, you will put uh, Kb, which is the boiling point elevation constant. Boiling point elevation constant. Okay? Uh, so, to apply this in a problem, calculate the boiling point of 0 0.2 molal, molal, m, small m, uh, uh, sometimes we, uh, for simplicity, we write m small, which reflects the molality, but actually, uh, you cannot make this in uh, uh, a published paper, because uh, the, we do not uh, approve this, yes, we will be confused, you should Write it mole solid per kg solvent. This is the unit, okay? But for simplicity, you will observe that people, they are writing small m to represent the molality and the capital M to represent molarity, which is wrong, actually, uh, uh, if you are writing a scientific paper, okay? Uh, molarity, capital M is, is wrong, actually. Uh, the, the correct is to write uh, mole per liter, mole, per liter. And even some journals, they do not accept the liter uh, as a unit because it is not an SI unit. Okay? Some, uh, SI unit is meter cube. Yeah. It's a, it's a unit, a conventional unit for the volume, but it's not SI unit. Because in SI unit, uh, the meter is uh, uh, approved unit for 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 the length so for volume is meter cube meter cube some journals they uh, necessitate to represent your units according to the SI system SI system okay so uh, calculate the boiling point of 0 0.2 mole molar aqua solution of glucose and this is the KB uh, I want you to uh, recognize the unit of KB you should recognize it to understand, okay? Kb is a boiling point elevation constant, is a constant, okay? And this is the rule, as I mentioned, delta Tb equal to I Kb uh, times M. Uh, and for glucose, I just mentioned that I equal to one, because it's not, uh, uh, it has no tendency to dissociate, okay? And this is a KB, and this is a molality. So you can calculate delta TB equal to 0 0.1. If I asked you, what is the new boiling? What is the new boiling? Can you, can, can you estimate it? The new boiling. The, 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 the boiling point of water was, was 100 degrees Celsius, right? So, so you, you know it. You know it. So now, for this solution, what is the new boiling? 
100 100.1. So this is the new boiling point of water. Uh, and that's why I ask you to distinguish between the boiling point and the boiling point elevation. The elevation is 0 0.1, but this is not the boiling point. Uh, many, many students, they got confused in this area. I sometimes I ask you, what is the boiling point of this solution? They write 0 0.1. They write 0 0.1. Of course, wrong. Of course, wrong. I'm asking you about the boiling point. So you calculate the elevation and then you estimate the new boiling. Okay, based on the boiling point of water and based on the elevation. Okay, you should recognize this. Okay, I'm not gonna remind you once again. Okay, how about the depression? The same rule or very similar rule for the uh, that we calculated for delta TB will uh, be applied also for the freezing point uh, depression, the estimation of the freezing point. Uh, but now is uh, ask uh, is uh, is trying to uh, describe the uh, the case of uh, lowering the the freezing point and these are two solutions and here in the for the pure liquid uh, the atoms are uh, going uh, very uh, very freely from the liquid state to the uh, solid state uh, during uh, the equilibrium uh, at the freezing point because uh, this equilibrium, uh, atoms uh, dissociate from the solid and the atoms from the liquid is trying to go to the crystallites of the solid. So there is a, an equilibrium. The addition of a non-volatile solid here, which is the red particles here, uh, encounter the process of uh, moving uh, the particles from the liquid state to the, to the solid state. And that, that's why we need to go to uh, lower temperature to inspire the freezing uh, process, okay? Uh, so the uh, very similar rule will be applied now to calculate uh, delta TF uh, and the KF here is uh, freezing point depression, depression curve. Also the difference depends on the molality of the solution, the molality of the solution, okay? So uh, a similar exercise can create the freezing point of two molar equal solution of glucose and is giving now Kf for, for uh, water, okay? So we calculate this and delta Tf will become 3.7 degree. How about the new freezing? What will be the new freezing? Would be 3.7? The new freezing would be 3.7? Do you agree? Why? Why you don't agree? You should support him. <laughs> no one is supporting you. You should, uh, should think about it. <laughs> okay. How was the new boiling, uh, new freezing? The new freezing. Now we calculated the depression, right? 3.7. So uh, what, what was the original uh, freezing of water? Zero. And now we are saying that the freezing will be lowered. So will be plus 3.7 or minus 3.7? I think this is uh, something uh, very easy, right? Very easy. So if, if you said 3.7, I will expect that uh, you did not understand the lesson, actually. And you expect that the freezing point will be higher, will be higher, right? So you should apply now to be minus 3.7, okay? The, the same that you are doing now, many people are doing the same in the exam, okay? Uh, sometimes I ask about the, the freezing point, they say 3.7. They calculated delta TB, and they substitute by this value. This is not the new freezing. This is not the new freezing. You should subtract this uh, difference uh, from the zero, which is the freezing point of, of what? Okay, how about osmosis? Osmosis is actually represent the, uh, the process of uh, moving uh, solvents 
to solution via a, a semi-permeable membrane. This is a process or a, a natural uh, movement of uh, of the, the, the solvent particles from uh, from uh, the, a container containing a pure solvent to a container to another container containing a uh, solution of the same solvent via a semi-permeable membrane that permit only the movement of the solvent particles of the solvent particles. So the, the driving force for the movement is the concentration difference because you have one container having a very high concentration of the solvent and in the solution, definitely the concentration of the solvent is lower. Okay, so there is a concentration gradient. So the movement is forced by this concentration gradient. And we will call this spontaneous process as osmosis, as, as osmosis, okay? Okay, uh, so if we started with a flask, uh, like this flask in a beaker, and the flask is fitted with a semi permeable membrane, and in the beaker we have a liquid solvent, and inside the flask here we have a solution of the same solvent, okay? And the membrane here permit the movement of the liquid particles from the beaker to the flask. What do you expect about the level of the liquid of the solution in the flask? Will eventually with the time will be higher or lower? Will be higher, higher because actually, as I said, uh, liquid uh, or the solvent will move from the beaker, from the beaker to go inside. In the beaker, the, 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 the concentration of the solvent is higher. So the diffusion or the movement of the particles will go from the beaker to the flask. So the flask, the level of the flask will rise up, will rise, will rise up. And at the same time, how about the level of the liquid in the beaker will go down, will go, will go down. So eventually you expect the level will be higher in the flask and the liquid here will be would be lower, okay? If you have two liquids with two different levels, elevations like this, the, the hydrostatic pressure will be different from both of them. So we are building a difference now in the hydrostatic pressure between both of them. Eventually with time, the difference will be increased. The difference, this will be lowered and this will be higher. So the difference will be higher eventually with, with time. Until we reach to a given uh, elevation, at that elevation, the hydrostatic pressure that is uh, built inside the flask will stop the osmos osmosis process. Because you know, <coughs> actually, uh, we, we, uh, uh, when, uh, by by uh, by running osmosis, okay, uh, the tendency of the solvent particles also from the flask uh, to the beaker will increase uh, according to the hydrostatic pressure. We have a hydrostatic pressure pushing the liquid uh, particles in the flask to go the opposite side, and uh, eventually with time, this force increase according to the difference in the elevation, okay? So we will reach to a, a, a given elevation at which osmosis will not be possible. The movement of liquid from the, uh, the solvent, from the pure solvent to the solution will be impossible because the hydrostatic pressure is very high inside the, inside the flask. At that point, when osmosis is stopped, the difference in elevation and the hydrostatic pressure that is built in the flask compared to the solution, we will call it the osmotic pressure, the osmotic pressure. So the osmotic pressure is actually the required pressure for stopping osmosis, for stopping osmosis, okay? This phenomena is very interesting and we'll see the applications right now for this uh, process, okay? So the osmosis is a phenomena of flowing a solvent into a solution, so a semi-permeable membrane, 
uh, eventually the liquid levels stop changing, uh, indicating that the system has reached equilibrium uh, because the difference in the hydrostatic pressure uh, in the solvent and in the solution uh, case uh, 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 we will observe after a certain time uh, that the pressure is enough to stop to stop osmosis and this pressure uh, that is required to stop the osmosis is called the osmotic osmotic pressure and we will uh, give it uh, this symbol pi the osmotic pressure of course you can uh, imagine if you have a, a U-shaped uh, tube like this, and uh, in one side here uh, we have pure solvent, and in the other side uh, we have a solution. And the in between here inside the tube we will have a semi-permeable membrane. The same phenomena will will apply. If you look here, the, the blue uh, particles. This is the solvent. Uh, this is the particles that uh, that are only allowed. To, uh, to pass through the, 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 the semi permeable membrane. Uh, look in the solution side, the green particles are not allowed to move, but the, 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 the blue uh, particles uh, in the solution side, they can also, they can also uh, go from the solution to, the, to the, uh, the solvent side, but actually uh, with a, a very lower rate than the particles from the solu uh, solvent. Because the other particles are forced under the concentration gradient to, to go this way. And the movement uh, of uh, particles from the solvent to the solution side here will uh, build uh, the difference in the hydrostatic pressure, which will reach to a given value. The osmosis will be stopped uh, and, uh, and actually this pressure is called the osmotic pressure. And at that, uh, 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 in that case, when osmotic pressure is built, you will observe here that the, 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 the movement of the particles from the solvent uh, will exactly uh, be the same as the movement of the uh, solvent from the solution to the, to the solvent, because we have equilibrium. The rate of flow from this side will equal to the rate of flow of the solvent from both sides. But uh, the solid, partic solid, solid particles are not moving. The, the membrane will not permit the movement of the solid particles. Okay? So uh, the osmotic pressure is, uh, as well, is related to the concentration of the, of the solid in the solution. Uh, and we can apply this uh, rule, which is uh, by equal to I M R T, where M is the molarity of the solution. And the molarity can be uh, separated to uh, parts, which is N over V, right? So if you uh, rearrange the formula, it will be by V equal to I N. This is very similar to the ideal gas law. Ideal, ga well, uh, ideal gas law was uh, BV equal to NRT. And now we have by, which is also the osmotic pressure, is a pressure as well, by V equal to I N R T. We only added here I, the ionization factor, by V equal to I N R N R T. Okay? So M here is the molar uh, concentration. Okay? So do you have a question? <coughs> yeah. Do for me. Permeable uh, can flow from the membrane. The membranes are designed to uh, to exchange a given material. Every membrane is specific for the exchanging a given material. So, uh, if you have, for example, a proton exchange membrane, proton exchange membrane, this proton exchange membrane uh, permit the exchange of protons only, H plus. Other things are not accepted, are not allowed. Sometimes some of them, they may escape, but originally is designed to avoid escaping any other type other than the proton, okay? <coughs> so exercise to determine the molar mass of a certain protein uh, a given mass uh, was uh, dissolved 
in enough water to make uh, one milliliter. So it's giving the mass and the volume of the solution. The osmotic pressure of this was found to be 1.12 torr at this value. Calculate the molar mass of the protein. We want to calculate the molar mass of, so we finished? The time is over? What time is now? 20, oh, so, but no one came. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you have something? Uh, no, no. Okay, let us continue on this. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, please. <laughs> wait, wait, you have something now? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, yeah. Lecture. Yeah. So you can, if you want to uh, go, uh, no problem. You go. Uh, and, 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 uh, anyway, I will continue at home. I will continue to record the, the remaining, okay? So uh, if you left now, uh, no problem, okay? I will stop when uh, they come, okay? Uh, 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 if you want to go, go ahead, no problem, okay? It's up to you, okay? So uh, the question is trying to uh, calculate, they came, okay? <laughs> Okay, okay. Take it from Stop. Uh, one minute, please. One minute. Okay. Uh, so we want to calculate. We want to calculate the molar mass of the protein. Okay. Uh, please give me attention. Give me attention, please. Okay. We want to calculate the molar mass of the protein, and we apply here in the in the rule in the vapor in the in the osmotic pressure. But first, they convert it from torr to atmosphere. And then we apply to calculate the molarity. According to the rule, I was equal to one because this is a protein, biological compound, not dissociated. So uh, you calculate the molarity, and this is the molarity, 6.01 mole. Uh, but it's not asking about the molarity, it's asking about the, the molar mass. So to calculate the molar mass uh, from the molarity, uh, molarity equal to N over V or the mass over the molar mass uh, times the volume. So everything is known here except the molar mass. So you substitute in this formula to calculate the molar mass of the protein, which is 1.66 times 10 uh, over uh, 4. And uh, I will continue at home uh, to explain starting from this from this slide. Until I see you, I will uh, I wish for you uh, everything good. Uh, and see you next lecture, inshallah. Uh, next week is uh, is off, okay? Yeah. So I will send you another lecture, only uh, also uh, online, inshallah, next week. Okay. Okay. See you, uh, inshallah, next uh, after Eid, inshallah. Salam alaikum wa Another uh, exercise: the observed osmotic pressure for uh, 0.1 molar solution of this compound, uh, iron uh, ammonium uh, sulfate uh, or iron uh, ammoniac sulfate at uh, 25 degrees Celsius is 10 atmosphere. Compare the expected and experimental values for uh, I, the, the Van't Hoff uh, factor. Uh, now, we want to calculate the uh, theoretical value of uh, I uh, from the composition of the salt. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, uh, this is the salt. It contains uh, one uh, mole of uh, iron ions, two moles of ammonium ions, two moles of uh, sulfate ions. So theoretically. I expect it to be uh, five. Uh, okay, let us now calculate I from the, the equation experimentally. Experimentally, in the, the equation, uh, he gave you the, the, the value of the uh, osmotic pressure and also the molarity and the, the temperature is, uh, is given as well, uh, 25 degrees. So we can calculate the value of I experimentally. So experimentally, I will equal to uh, 4.42. Uh, this is uh, definitely less than the theoretical value, which indicates that uh, a possible ion pairing uh, occurs in the salt. 
So uh, theoretically, we expect that the dissociation of one mole of the salt will give five moles of ions, but experimentally, the data indicated that uh, this dissociation is not complete. It's not con so we, we will have something like ion pairing, so the dissociation is not is not con and th this is uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, questions that. Uh, uh, gave information about uh, the dissociation of salts, and from this information, you can calculate the uh, percent of dissociation of the salt if you compare the uh, theoretical value uh, of the Van Hoff factor with the with the uh, experimental value. Okay, dialysis. This is a, a, a technique. Uh, very similar to the the process of osmosis, but in that technique, uh, the membrane, the, the semi-permeable membrane, allow the transfer of both solvent molecules and small amounts of uh, ions, small amount uh, of the solid uh, molecules and and ions. Uh, and this uh, process is naturally uh, occurring at the walls of most plant and animals, animal cells. Look at this uh, image here that uh, they use in the uh, artificial uh, kidney machine to purify blood. The impure blood uh, enter from one side uh, to, uh, uh, to be subjected to the dialysing solutions uh, where the waste uh, in the blood uh, 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 are removed to the dialysing solution. Uh, and from the other side, the pure blood uh, exit from the other side. This is a very uh, important uh, process to remove uh, the, uh, the urine and improper impurities in the blood uh, uh, to uh, purify the, the, the blood in the kidney. So uh, to purify the blood in the, 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 in the human body. So uh, this is also a very similar process to the, the uh, osmosis. But as you can see that uh, the membrane is permitting the uh, the transfer of uh, ions as well as the the, the solvent, uh, and the process is called dialysis. Uh, another uh, process is uh, reverse osmosis, uh, which is uh, typically used in the desalination. Uh, this is a, a, an opposite process to the osmosis. In the osmosis, we uh, uh, we uh, indicated the the, the 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 passage of the solvent only the solvent through the the, uh, the membrane, but from the uh, pure solvent uh, container to the solution container. In the reverse osmosis, the, the, the opposite occurs, where the solvent is moving via the membrane from the, uh, the solution side to the uh, pure solvent to the pure solvent si side. And that, of course, requires the subjection to a, a pressure, a pressure on the solution side, which is higher than the osmotic pressure, which is higher than the osmotic and we explained before if the uh, if the osmotic pressure is higher the process will be reversed so this is a reverse osmosis reverse osmosis process and is typically used in the purification of seawater or uh, what we call now desalination the removal of salts from seawater. Look at here, this is a applied pressure. We apply pressure higher than the osmotic pressure uh, on the container uh, containing the seawater to force the, 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 the solvent molecule, which is the water, to pass via the semi-permeable membrane to the fresh water side 
and in that case we purified water or we have uh, made desalination for the sea water so the pressure that uh, we apply should be uh, higher than the, the, the osmotic pressure uh, and the semi permeable membrane uh, in that case is acting as a molecular filter to remove the solid particles actually the solid particles will not move will remain in the in the, in the side of the sea water uh, and only the liquid or the, the solvent which is water molecules will move uh, via the membrane to the fresh water side so the process of removing dissolved salts from seawater is basically uh, based on the uh, reverse osmosis, or the desalination is based on the reverse osmosis. So this is one of the uh, questions that we can ask in the multiple choice. If I ask you the desalination is based on the osmosis, on the uh, uh, dialysis on the reverse osmosis, you should select the reverse osmosis. As we uh, discussed the uh, desalination, uh, we can also uh, uh, highlight the uh, different types of uh, purification or the desalination uh, or uh, the separation techniques. Uh, one of them is uh, based on the solar. Uh, radiation which is called the solar desalination and basically in that process the, the, the sun radiation is used to heat up the uh, the sea water uh, to the uh, uh, to uh, attain the boiling uh, point uh, or to in, uh, enhance the uh, vaporization to enhance even uh, you, you do not need to reach to the boiling but at least uh, the energy supply to the, the sea water will uh, enhance the uh, vaporization of water and uh, and this uh, water uh, uh, in the vapor state can be condensed uh, and be collected uh, to a receiver uh, as shown here in the figure to be uh, used uh, for uh, several purposes, like in the agriculture, like in the drinking, uh, whatever. Uh, anyway, uh, this is the separation technique as well to separate the pure water from the uh, the the, the sea water from the the, the, the the water containing the salts like sodium chloride. So uh, this is also another process of the. Uh, desalination or the separation or purification of water. Uh, in the rest of the lecture, we will cover <clears throat> another uh, interesting topic for uh, the separation of uh, liquids and the purification of uh, liquids. Uh, which is based on the distillation. Distillation. This is uh, the, the, the schematic of the uh, uh, assembled distillation system, uh, which uh, basically uh, combines of a uh, distilling flask, a fractional uh, column, or a, uh, a column here uh, with a condenser where uh, water flows from the bottom to the uh, upside here, uh, and then uh, the uh, vapor. Uh, we 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 will heat up the flask here to uh, to push the vapor to move in the column, and then in the condenser to be condensed uh, at the end in a receiving flask, where the liquid in the receiving flask will be called distillate. Uh, this is actually the uh, the, the symbol uh, distillation process. Uh, if you have uh, in the distilling flask uh, the seawater, for example, 
if you have the seawater, which is basically uh, water plus sodium chloride, for example. Uh, and if you heat up this solution, uh, the, the, the vapor of water will, uh, will concentrate in the gas phase, in the gas phase, and the, and the, and the water vapor uh, molecules will, uh, will pass through the fractional column to reach to the, the, the condenser. And then, uh, as you can see, the, uh, the, the direction of the water in and out in the condenser will permit the condensation of uh, liquid water in the receiving flask. So eventually, what you can, uh, if you continue in this process, you will uh, separate the, 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 the pure water uh, from the distilling flask uh, 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 at the end in the distillate uh, form or in the receiving flask and uh, by the end as well in the distilling flask only salt will remain because uh, water uh, will uh, completely uh, convert to uh, the gas phase and uh, and will be condensed in the in the receiving flask so this is a simple distillation process uh, but uh, I, I, and for the simple distillation uh, process as well uh, we are talking about uh, the mixture of uh, a volatile liquid like the water with a non-volatile solid like sodium chloride but how about the case if we have two volatile liquids together in a mixture and we want to make a distillation purification for one of them uh, the process will be more difficult in that case as uh, if you heat up the, the mixture of two volatile uh, uh, liquids uh, the vapor will uh, eventually be uh, of the two Liquids will will will, will uh, both liquids will exist in the vapor phase as in the liquid phase, but of course with different composition. With different composition, I mean by different composition, the the liquid that uh, will be more volatile will be more volatile will be concentrated more in the gas phase because uh, the uh, the more volatile liquids will will vaporize. Uh, more easily uh, uh, to the gas phase and uh, of course their concentration in the gas phase will be higher than in the in the solution phase in the solution phase so uh, by the end uh, if you if, if you condense uh, the the vapor phase at that uh, 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 at, uh, uh, at this temperature or uh, in, in the first step, uh, if you if you condense the, the vapor uh, and you collect them in the receiving flask and the distillate, they uh, will have a different composition from that existing in the distillate in the distilling flask. Uh, so if you start in the distilling flask with a giving composition, uh, for liquid A and liquid B, which uh, where liquid A is more volatile than liquid B, uh, by the end in the distilling flask, you will observe that the composition of liquid A will be less than liquid B in the distilling flask, but will be higher in the distillate uh, than uh, liquid B because it is more volatile. It is more volatile. So. If you, if you take the liquid in the, the distillate and you repeat again the distillation process, uh, the, the more volatile liquids will be concentrated more and more, more and more, and you repeat the process, it will be more and more concentrated until you uh, eventually, at the end, uh, uh, you can separate in the, uh, in the, 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 the liquid A in the flask uh, alone without, without B. So the, the repetition of the process, uh, this is what 
uh, we mean by uh, the fractional distillation. The fractional distillation is uh, basically the repetition of the process until you can separate the two volatile liquids, the two volatile, the two volatile liquids. We will see this uh, in detail in the next uh, slides. Uh, and actually, we should differentiate between uh, ideal solutions and the non-ideal solutions uh, because uh, the separation will be simple for ideal solutions, but for non-ideal solutions, we will see that uh, the process will not uh, achieve the, uh, the complete separation or the complete uh, purification of the liquids. And uh, one example for the non-ideal solutions is uh, the, the mixture of water and the ethanol. Uh, both, of course, are volatile, uh, and the ethanol boils at uh, 78.4 degrees Celsius, but water boils at 100 degrees uh, Celsius, uh, which means that uh, ethanol is more volatile than, than water. So you expect that the variable will be rich in uh, ethanol than in in uh, in water so by heating the mixture the most volatile component which is ethanol will concentrate to a greater degree in the vapor leaving uh, the liquid uh, water and the ethanol uh, 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 are actually uh, of the examples uh, uh, which are not uh, uh, ideal uh, they are uh, non-ideal uh, because actually uh, for ideal solutions you expect that the boiling point of any composition of the mixtures uh, 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 should locate uh, between the boiling point of the uh, of, uh, uh, of one component and the boiling point of the other component the boiling point should be in between for any given composition. Uh, but for non-ideal uh, solutions, uh, the boiling point may be higher than uh, both of them or sometimes lower than both of them based on the deviation from the ideality, with uh, a negative deviation or a positive uh, deviation. Uh, for uh, this mixture, the water and the ethanol, uh, they form uh, what we call as uh, Azeotropes, azeotropes, where the mixture boils at a lower temperature than either component. This is for water and ethanol. The, 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 uh, for a certain composition of uh, the mixtures, uh, we will observe that the boiling point of that composition of that mixture will be lower than uh, the boiling point of water and the boiling point of ethanol. Of course, other solutions may form different isotopes where the mixture may boil at higher temperature, not uh, lower, higher temperature. Most of them, of course, are non-ideal, and we will take some examples uh, about both uh, cases. Uh, unfortunately, for uh, isotropic mixtures, the complete uh, purification of uh, liquids is, uh, is difficult. Uh, so, uh, for water and the ethanol, a mixture of 96% ethanol and 4% water uh, boils at uh, 78.2 degrees Celsius. If you look to 78.2, you will find that this is lower than even the boiling point of pure ethanol and the boiling point of uh, water. And this is the, the case for azeotropes, where the, the, the boiling point of uh, a certain composition of the solution uh, is lower than the boiling point of pure, of pure liquids. For this reason, ethanol cannot be completely purified direct, uh, by direct uh, fractional distillation of ethanol water mission. This will be uh, uh, more uh, obvious uh, when we uh, investigate the boiling point composition uh, diagram. Uh, but, uh, and to design this diagram first, we want to uh, 
لو اوك ات ذا ذا فيبر بريشر كومبوزيشن دايجرام ذات وي ديزاينيد ات ذا بيجينينج اوف ذا ليكشر اف يو هاف تو فولاتايل ليكويدز اي اند بي اند يو بلوت ذا ريليشن شيب اوف ذا فيبر بريشر اجينست ذا مول فراكشن اوف ذا ليكويدز يو ويل اوبزرف ذات Uh, the verbal pressure of uh, of a is uh, a function of its mole fraction in the mixture, and this is the red line here. You can observe starting from zero a, uh, the verbal pressure start to increase by increasing the mole fraction of a until uh, we uh, attain to the pure a liquid. Uh, at which the the the, the fiber pressure is, is that of the pure uh, A. The same for the green line for P. And if you want to calculate the uh, total fiber pressure at any uh, given composition, just uh, you need to uh, add uh, the fiber pressure of uh, or the partial pressure of A and the partial pressure of B uh, in that. Uh, solution uh, to calculate the, the total uh, pressure. This is the blue line here. Okay, uh, if you want to convert this diagram to the boiling point diagram, uh, as I said, the, 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 the more volatile liquid is expected to have a lower boiling point. So uh, for the, the, the liquid B, you expect that it has Uh, a lower boiling point, and for uh, liquid A, uh, it, it will have a higher boiling point, like uh, what you see here in the uh, next diagram. Now, uh, how about the boiling points of the, the, the mixtures between them? Now, uh, from this uh, figure, uh, you can estimate the uh, boiling point of pure A and pure B. But how about the, the boiling points of the mixtures? Is expected is supposed to be in between that of pure A and pure B, like in this diagram. In the, the blue line, this blue line represents the boiling point of the uh, different solutions of different compositions of A and, and B. This is the, the diagram, uh, the plot uh, representing the boiling points of the different mixtures of different. Mole fractions. So basically, we uh, to make this diagram uh, useful, uh, we want to add another line for the composition of the vapor. If you uh, in the, the blue line here in this figure, this represents the boiling point of the uh, mixtures uh, in the solution phase between A and B. So if you started with the mixture of 0.5 A and 0.5 B. Uh, the blue line indicates the boiling point of that solution. So how about the composition in the vapor phase for that composition, for the 0.5 and 0.5 in the solution? How about the composition in the, in the vapor phase? And this is the important line that we want to add to this figure to represent the composition of the vapor uh, phase of the vapor phase not the composition in the solution in the solution phase so for a mixture of two volatile liquids a and b where b is more volatile b now is more volatile uh, uh, and uh, actually it has a lower boiling point uh, 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 which also indicates Uh, that it has weaker intermolecular forces uh, as it has a lower boiling point. So liquid B it will uh, vaporize more easily at a particular temperature. This is, uh, is known by default. If you boil this mixture, you would expect that liquid B escaped to form a vapor more easily than a liquid A. Uh, this Uh, will uh, uh, follow uh, uh, the, the concentration of liquid of 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 
P in the verbal phase more than A. More than A. So if a fractional distillation for this mixture with XA and XB is done, the vapor will be rich in B. The vapor, the vapor will be rich in B, uh, which indicates that uh, the composition of B in the vapor phase will be, be higher than the composition of B in the solution phase. Uh, Why the remaining liquid will be rich in A? So that the composition of A in the solution phase will be higher than the composition of A in the vapor in the vapor phase. Uh, if you condense the vapor, uh, and the condensation means that you convert the vapor to the liquid to the liquid phase. Uh, of course, it will retain the same composition in the vapor phase in the vapor phase. Uh, well, which has a different composition from the original composition uh, in the solution phase. So uh, now you will have uh, another solution with a different composition uh, where uh, the composition of B will be higher uh, and the composition of A will be lower than the original concentrations, their original concentrations in the uh, in the initial uh, solution, uh, and that actually will represent uh, a single point in the vapor composition diagram. A point in the diagram. Look at this diagram here. If you started with this solution here, uh, the uh, blue arrow here. Uh, if you heat up this composition, it will boil at this point. Uh, after it boils at this point, uh, the vapor will be concentrated in the more volatile uh, uh, liquid. Which one is more volatile, pure A or pure B? Uh, pure B will be more uh, volatile uh, as it has a, a lower boiling point. So you expect the vapor composition will be higher in MB, so we will uh, move in this line like this here until we reach to a given composition, which uh, ha has the rose line here. Uh, so this is, will be the composition of the vapor phase. This is a single point for a single solution. If you uh, started uh, at this point here, uh, the blue one here uh, with this composition, the vapor will have the composition in the rose line here. This is a single point, and this will be a single point in the uh, the line that we want to uh, plot for the composition of the vapor, for the composition of the vapor. So this co composition in the vapor correspond to the other composition in the solution phase. So. Uh, uh, so this is the composition of the liquid, and liquid starts boiling at this point, uh, and this will give the vapor composition. So if you continue with different points, different concentrations, different mole fractions, so you can design this line for the vapor composition for several points, for multiple points. So at any given point, uh, for the solution here, if you want to heat up the solution to get uh, a, a solution uh, to, uh, to, to make uh, a boiling, uh, every single point on the blue line here will uh, have a, a corresponding point on the vapor composition diagram. And this dotted line we will call as tie lines, tie lines, the lines connecting the composition uh, of the liquids in the solution phase and the composition of the uh, of uh, both materials in the vapor in the vapor phase. Uh, definitely, as you can see uh, regularly here, at any uh, composition for any composition, the, uh, the, the 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 tie lines connect the the, the compositions. In the solution uh, and the, the the vapor phase, uh, where the the the, the vapor uh, uh, phase solutions 
the vapor phase uh, uh, are always uh, reach in in uh, the, the the more volatile material, which is P here uh, in that case. Uh, this is a good uh, place for uh, a question in the exam. If I asked you uh, the tie lines connected uh, the, the 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 different uh, or or the corresponding uh, uh, compositions in the solution and then the verbal phase, where in the verbal phase the uh, the composition is uh, rich in uh, which material, B or A, the more volatile or the less volatile. You should be familiar with this type, uh, with these types of uh, of questions. So, if you boil a liquid, make sure you can find out the temperature uh, it boils at and the composition of the vapor of the boiling uh, liquid. Uh, for example, uh, in the next diagram, if you boil a liquid. Make sure uh, C1, it will boil at T1, and the vapor uh, at the top will uh, boil, uh, uh, will have uh, a composition of uh, C2. This is the example. This is very similar to what we uh, observed in the last diagram. If you have this composition, C1, and the, uh, for the mixture, which is rich in A, as it is very close to A here, uh, and we want to separate B from A. So uh, we will heat up this solution. Uh, it will start boiling at T1. And the, the composition of the vapor will basically be here in the rose line here at C2. This is the composition of the vapor, of the vapor phase, of the vapor. Uh, uh, and definitely the, the, the composition of B will be higher in that, uh, in that vapor, in that vapor uh, uh, state, in the vapor state. Uh, so how about if you continue uh, uh, heating up the composition of uh, C2, definitely uh, at that point here, in the the, uh, the mixture will start boiling, and if it started boiling here, the vapor will have the composition which is more and more concentrated in MB. And if you continue this process, eventually you will separate separate B in the uh, distillate. So the fractional uh, distillation uh, is uh, a process that. Uh, depend on the repetition of the uh, distillation of two volatile liquids until you separate uh, both of them. Suppose that you uh, collected and condensed the vapor over the top of the boiling liquid and reboil it. Uh, you would now be, bo uh, now be boiling a new liquid which had a composition of C2 that uh, will be uh, boiled at a new temperature T2 and the composition will B of the vapor will be C3. If you continue here, you will eventually uh, get by the end pure UV. And this is uh, clear here in the diagram. We started at C1, uh, it boiled here at T1, and uh, the vapor phase will uh, have the composition of C2. If you started the boiling the solution at C2, uh, it will boil at a, another temperature, which is T2, and the vapor composition will be. C3. If you continue up, you will eventually have the pure B uh, liquid, uh, vapor then liquid in the distillate. So uh, by, uh, by this process, you can separate B from A completely. Uh, and this one example that uh, explains the, the, the process and uh, try to correlate the composition uh, of the two materials in the solution phase and uh, their corresponding concentrations in the in the vapor phase. Uh, one mole of A is mixed with two mole of B. So uh, this is in the solution phase. Uh, so you can cal calculate very easily the mole fraction of A and the mole fraction of B, which uh, has a, a higher mole fraction. 
uh, B will be higher. B will be higher as it has two more. Uh, one of them, uh, A, will be one third the mole fraction, uh, and B will be two thirds uh, the mole fraction of B. So the resulting the mixture will boil at one atmosphere. So this is in the normal uh, atmosphere at a temperature at which the vapor pressure of A is uh, uh, 1,140 torr and that of pure B uh, 570 torr. So uh, it's giving you at the same temperature the vapor pressure of pure A and pure, pure B. Calculate the composition of the vapor. Uh, so it's asking now about the composition of the vapor. So, uh, you can calculate the, the mole fraction of A and B in the solution phase. You can calculate it. We, we, you also have the, uh, the vapor uh, pressure of uh, A and the vapor pressure, pure A and the vapor pressure of pure B. And uh, the vapor pressure, uh, uh, the boiling actually starts when the vapor pressure of uh, the solution, uh, which is basically the summation of PA and PB, the partial pressures of A and the partial pressures of B, uh, will equal to one atmosphere. So the boiling starts. So ideally, at any given uh, temperature, uh, BT equal to PA and uh, plus B, BB. Okay. So from Raoult's law, from Raoult's law. Uh, we can uh, uh, get a relationship uh, between the, the, the mole fraction, uh, between the, the uh, partial pressure of A uh, with the mole fraction of A in a given solution, in a given solution. So uh, uh, you can apply Raoult's law here and everything is known here. You have the partial pressure you have the the, the 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 vapor pressure of pure A and the vapor pressure of pure B, and you have the mole fraction of A and the mole fraction of of B. So you can calculate the uh, partial pressure of A and the partial pressure of of B. So you, if you apply this, you will find that the partial pressure of A equal to one over three times uh, 100, uh, uh, 1,140 uh, torr, which is equal to 380 torr. The same for uh, partial pressure of B will equal to two third times 570 torr, which will equal to 380 torr. As you can see, the, the, the partial pressure uh, of A equal to the partial pressure of B, which is not necessary. But the conditions uh, is suitable to make them uh, the same. Uh, but now you can uh, uh, look at the values of the uh, partial pressures of A and the B. They are the same in the, the, the gas phase, in the gas phase, even if their mole fractions in the original solution were not the same, were not the same. But uh, what made them uh, equal in the partial pressure in the vapor phase, the, 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 the volatility of the A, which is higher than the volatility of, of B. Even if the mole fraction of A is less than the mole fraction of B, but a is more volatile. A is more volatile. So uh, their partial pressure in the vapor phase uh, became became the same. So we we, we could uh, of course if you uh, add both partial pressures of A and B, you will uh, get the one atmosphere uh, which uh, is supposed uh, to be the pressure. Uh, of boiling the, the, the solution. So, so now we want to use uh, Dalton's law uh, to uh, get information about the composition in the vapor phase, the composition in the vapor. Dalton's law actually correlates the partial pressure in the vapor phase to the mole fraction uh, 
uh, of the components in the gas phase. In the gas, if you remember Dalton's law, we studied Dalton's law in the gas uh, chapters. So Dalton's law is uh, is uh, stating or uh, is uh, concerned with the uh, the partial pressures of uh, mixture of gases, mixture of gases or mixture of vapors. So uh, it correlates the partial pressure uh, of uh, any vapor to the to its composition in the vapor to its composition in the vapor in the vapor. So now. This is the law BA equal to XA, but in the vapor phase, uh, times the, the total pressure in the vapor. The total vapor, uh, vapor pressure in, in the vapor, uh, we know, uh, and we know also the partial pressure of A that we calculated equal to 380. Uh, this is for uh, PA and for uh, PB, so we can uh, easily uh, substitute in this equation to calculate X. A. So XA equal to PA over BT, uh, which is 380 over 660, uh, which equal to uh, 0.5. The same for XB will also equal to 0 0.5. Uh, now we want to compare between the composition or at the beginning in the, the solution before, uh, before distillation and after distillation. Before distillation, the, the composition was uh, this uh, uh, for A, it was 0 0.33, which is one third, and the 4B was 0 0.67, which is two thirds. But now in the vapor phase, look at in the vapor phase, both uh, more fractions are the same for A and the B, uh, which indicates that the, 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 the vapor phase is more concentrated in A than in the uh, solution and less concentrated in B uh, compared to uh, its original composition in the solution phase. Uh, so, so, so now we could uh, concentrate A more in the vapor phase. And if you repeat the composition again and uh, the, the distillation again and again, the, the, the composition of A will be more concentrated, more concentrated, more concentrated, until you reach to a composition of mole fraction of A equal to one, mole fraction of B equal to zero. At that point, you could completely separate A from, from B. This is the significance of the fractional distillation. Uh, and this is actually the case for the ideal solutions. And uh, this uh, boiling point diagram uh, that you can see uh, on the board here, uh, this is for the ideal solutions where the uh, boiling points of the mixtures uh, of different compositions are located between the uh, boiling points of both liquids. Uh, 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 no uh, uh, there is no uh, uh, a single composition between the two liquids uh, that has uh, a higher or uh, a lower boiling points than uh, any of the of the uh, boiling points of the pure liquids. Uh, so this is the case of the ideal ideal solutions, and this is the liquid uh, boiling uh, curve. And this is a vapor composition curve, and the tie lines connect the compositions of the uh, uh, the solution and in the vapor for a single uh, a single uh, composition system. So if you started with X one, you can uh, uh, obtain the the composition the vapor phase as X two, and if you continue uh, distilling again uh, a solution with the composition X two. It will give the uh, composition in the vapor phase as X3, and if you continue, we'll go to X4 until we can uh, purify the liquid, the pure A, the pure A in the distillate phase. Uh, and actually, you should uh, be familiar with the, the, the titles here. This is pure A, and this is pure B. Uh, the uh, continuation of the process uh, will eventually end to have the pure A in the distillate flask. And in the uh, 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 
and in, in the original flask will uh, have the pure pure B. Uh, so uh, you should be familiar which uh, has a higher vapor pressure, which has a lower boiling point, and uh, which will uh, be remained in the uh, original flask, and which will be one uh, will be condensed uh, as a distillate uh, at the end of the of the process. So the boiling point decreases until finishing the process. Okay, it is more volatile in that case. So this is the case of the ideal solutions here in the, the flask, pure B will remain at the beginning and the A is more volatile, will be uh, collected in the, uh, in the distillate flask here as a distillate flask. And the distillate in the, in, the, in, the, in the flask. This will be received pure A uh, for that case as A is more volatile uh, and it has uh, less uh, boiling, boiling point. How about the non ideal solution? As I said at the beginning, they form what, what we call as uh, isotopes. Uh, so uh, the isotopes are basically a constant boiling mixture, constant. Boiling mixture or uh, an isotropic mixture is a mixture of two volatile liquids with a specific composition which, on boiling the vapor composition, uh, on boiling the vapor composition is exactly the same as the liquid. It has a constant boiling point. If you uh, if you go back to the 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 the, the slide, uh, the that we described here. For every single uh, mixture of uh, composition X1, if you uh, uh, boil this mixture, the vapor phase will have uh, a different composition from the original one. From the original one, uh, and therefore we can continue in the separation process. How about if you uh, heat up a, a given mixture of uh, composition X1, uh, but the vapor phase uh, uh, will have the same composition uh, of X1 in the solution phase. At that point, you will not continue uh, more uh, in the uh, distillation process. You will not continue, continue more in the separation process. Uh, the, the separation process will stop here. And this is the case actually for non-ideal solution. For non-ideal solutions, the, the, the problem or the, 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 the mixture that uh, uh, will uh, have uh, a composition uh, where when you boil uh, this mixture, the vapor phase will have the same composition as that in the solution phase. Uh, we will call that mixture as azeotropic mixture or azeotrope, azeotrope, as uh, the process of uh, distillation or purification will stop here at that composition. You will not continue uh, anymore uh, in the distillation process uh, with this uh, mixture, with this azeotrope. And actually, uh, this uh, happen uh, if we have uh, either a positive deviation or a negative deviation from Raoult's law, from Raoult's law. Uh, I, as, as you know, Raoult's law concerned with uh, ideal uh, solutions. Uh, and uh, previously, in the last lecture, we uh, introduced for the uh, two different types of deviation from uh, Raoult's law, or from the ideal behavior, which is the positive deviation or the negative deviation. The positive deviation, we stated that the, the mixture will have a higher proper pressure than uh, the vapor pressure of pure liquids uh, at given uh, at uh, any given composition, and for the negative deviation, uh, the opposite occurs, where the, the solutions will have lower uh, lower vapor pressure than expected by by Raoult's law. In the negative deviation, uh, we expect that, that, that there is a sort of interaction. Uh, between the two liquids, or uh, w which is uh, higher even than uh, the, uh, 
because existing in the pure liquids and the, in the positive deviation the opposite uh, occurs so this is an example for the positive deviation this is the vapor pressure here and the, uh, the look at the ideal vapor pressure is supposed to be uh, in that straight line but uh, 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 in reality the vapor pressure of the, the solution is higher than the, the, the vapor pressure of pure A and pure B. That will uh, be a problem in the, 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 the separation, as I said, and the, the designing of the boiling point diagram will be different from the one that we just uh, described in the, the last slides. So this will be the, 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 the boiling point composition diagram look at these uh, lines here, they uh, will form a, a given point here at that composition, which is 55.6% percent, percent, mass percent uh, of ethanol. So this is the maximum uh, concentration of ethanol that we can obtain. We cannot obtain higher than this, than this uh, composition. So if I ask you in the exam, can you, uh, obtain uh, a 97 percent uh, uh, ethanol solution with water uh, by fractional distillation you should answer no we cannot obtain that consumption this is the, the the maximum concentration that you can uh, obtain for ethanol in the purification of water uh, and uh, methanol and uh, water and ethanol uh, so this is the boiling point diagram of water and ethanol. Uh, and if you look here, uh, and this uh, actually is based on the positive deviation, as I explained in the vapor pressure diagram. Uh, the vapor pressure is higher than uh, for the solution than uh, for the pure uh, liquids, ethanol and the water. And this uh, actually because of the uh, the interactions in the ethanol and the water is higher than the uh, interactions uh, between ethanol and and the water. So uh, we expect that the vapor pressure will be higher and the boiling points will be will be uh, lower. So uh, look at here. This is the point of the uh, azeotrope uh, composition, uh, which is zero point zero five. Uh, mole percent in the last diagram it was in the uh, mass uh, percent but here in the, in the mole percent is is also 0.05 percent this is the uh, maximum uh, this is uh, the, the composition of water the composition of water in the measure so uh, it is actually uh, 0.95 percent of of ethanol 0.95 percent of of essence so if you start uh, regularly as we did in the, the distillation previously if you have a mixture of x1 which is rich in water uh, at that point at x1 and you started boiling that mixture so it will start boiling at that and this temperature and the composition in the vapor phase would be rich in ethanol to be in the x2 if you continue, it will be at X3. If you continue, it will go to that composition, to the azeotrope, to the 0, 0, 0.05 water, uh, mole fraction of water, and the process will, will, will stop. If you take the vapor, if you condense the vapor of that mixture, it will have the same composition. It will have the same composition, which is 0 0.05 water and 0.95 of ethanol. If you started boiling that mixture, it will give also the, the concentration in the vapor phase exactly the same, 0 0.05 water and 0 0.95 of ethanol. If you repeat the process uh, more and more, in uh, every uh, time, the, the, the composition of the uh, solution in the vapor phase will be exactly the same as in the solution phase. So the process will end up to a situation that you cannot uh, purify anymore the, 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 the mixture uh, or you cannot 
concentrate the ethanol uh, in the mixture more than uh, 0.95 mole percent. So uh, the process will stop here uh, and the, 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 the mixture in the uh, in the, uh, the, the the receiving flask will uh, eventually uh, be, uh, uh, be be the uh, isotrope, the isotrope, the, which is the mixture of ethanol and uh, water with a specific composition, with a specific composition, which is 0 0.05 mole percent of water and 0 0.0 0 point uh, 0 point nine five of of ethanol. So uh, by the end of the the process in the uh, distilling flask, you will uh, you will find that uh, water uh, remains in the distilling flask, and in the uh, receiving flask, uh, you uh, uh, the distillate will be basically the isotropic mixture, which is a mixture of ethanol. And water, so uh, you cannot uh, concentrate the ethanol any more uh, mo more than this uh, composition. Uh, uh, another example for the the negative deviation uh, from the ideal solution uh, uh, is the, the mixture of water and uh, uh, HCl. Uh, imagine. Uh, the, the, the composition on the axis here is uh, is for the, the, the mole fraction of HCl, and uh, the process is uh, targeting here uh, to uh, uh, to separate water from the the, 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 the the mixture of water and and uh, HCl. So uh, if you started with the mixture uh, at X1 in uh, the composition of H, uh, X1. Which is basically uh, rich in uh, HCl, so you want to separate uh, the water from uh, that uh, mixture to concentrate the HCl in the, the in the distilling flask. So uh, you started with uh, the composition X1, and you uh, heat up the, the the mixture to boil the solution at uh, that point. Uh, which is uh, supposed to have the composition in the vapor phase at X2. So uh, now X2 is uh, rich more in water than uh, the composition of uh, X1. So if you uh, condense the solution uh, uh, that has the composition of X2 and uh, you uh, repeat the boiling process, so it will uh, boil at uh, another boiling point, which is lower than that uh, of the 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 the, the, com uh, the mixture of composition of X1. Uh, I, I want to uh, attract your attention here to compare between the boiling points of the of both uh, solutions uh, of different compositions based. On the uh, the percent of the uh, component that has uh, a lower boiling point. Uh, if you want uh, to compare between the boiling point of X1 and the X2 uh, solutions, uh, X2 is rich in uh, water that has a lower boiling point than than HCl. So you expect that the boiling point of the mixture of composition of X2. Is lower than the composition of, of, of the boiling point of solution having the composition of X1. This is a good uh, place to ask in the exam is to compare between the boiling points of uh, different uh, solutions of different compositions uh, based uh, on the the, the 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 boiling point of the uh, of the uh, pure liquids uh, and which will have. Uh, a higher composition of that liquid uh, and which will have uh, a higher composition of the other liquid. So this is a good place for uh, questioning in the, the multiple choice uh, questions. Uh, now, if you uh, heat up the, 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 the solution having the composition of exit 2, uh, it will boil at that point and uh, uh, and the vapor will have the composition of uh, X3. If you continue 
more and more you eventually you will separate uh, water in the day in, in the uh, receiving flask but the 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 the, the, the solution uh, in the in the distilling flask will uh, will not uh, be pure hcl will uh, basically will be will have the the composition of the isotope uh, uh, the, the mixture having uh, a composition of uh, hsl as 0 0.8 uh, mole uh, mole fraction so this is uh, the, the the solution uh, that uh, will uh, remain in the in the distilling flask and the the the, the, the diagram in this uh, figure uh, represent the case so in the eventually in the distilling flask the isotope will remain and uh, only water will be separated in the receiving flask so uh, so so basically what you did here you try to concentrate the uh, hcl in the in the distilling flask but uh, but but no way to separate HSL from water. No way to separate completely HSL from from water. Uh, uh, well, and th this was an example for the negative deviation from the ideal solution. Uh, another topic uh, that uh, we need to cover in this uh, lecture uh, as well is the distribution. Uh, uh, the distribution of uh, uh, inorganic salt uh, or uh, in ionic salts uh, be, uh, between two immiscible liquids. Uh, look at this image. This is an example for uh, miscible liquids and immiscible liquids. Uh, at the left of the the image here, uh, we have two immiscible uh, liquids like uh, the water and the oil, uh, water and the hexane. Uh, you can see that they separate into uh, distinguishable uh, layers and you can see this obviously uh, with your eyes uh, on the other hand on the right side of the image here we have two uh, immiscible liquids they dissolve uh, homogeneously in each other so you cannot distinguish the, uh, any uh, separation between the, the, the two the two liquids the uh, the distribution depends on the uh, the 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 distribution law uh, depends on the distribution of uh, inorganic salts uh, between two immiscible liquids like those at the left of the image here uh, where the inorganic salts this uh, uh, is soluble in both liquids in both in both uh, liquids so distribution of a solid between two non miscible uh, solvents so nernest supportation distribution law states that when a solid is taken up with two immiscible liquids in both of which the solid is soluble the solid distributes itself between the two liquids in such a way that the ratio of its concentration in the two liquid faces is constant at a given temperature provided that the molecular state of the distributed salt is the same in both the phases. So uh, the, the last Smith statement indicates that the salt will not dissociate, will not associate when uh, it gets uh, dis uh, dissolved in, uh, in uh, one of them, in, uh, in either of the two liquids. So there is no uh, dissociation there is no association so basically the distribution will be uh, will follow the nearness distribution load where the the, the concentration uh, uh, of the, the the solid in uh, in one liquid to the other liquid will be constant at given at given temperature and this actually can be uh, mathematically expressed in this equation, Ca over Cb equal to K, which is uh, a constant. So the concentration uh, of the, the, the solid in a uh, solution A in uh, liquid A over the concentration of the solid in uh, a liquid B will be constant at constant temperature. Uh, and this uh, diagram explains the process. Uh, this is uh, the, the, the 
uh, the the non uh, or the, the this is the solid that uh, is supposed to be soluble in both liquids A and B, and uh, when you uh, add this uh, solid to uh, two immeasurable liquids where the solid is soluble in both of them, it will distribute uh, in uh, in a way uh, where the concentration in A over the concentration in B is constant at given at given uh, temperature. Uh, and this law holds for dilute uh, solutions where no association or dissociation takes place. How about if association or dissociation uh, took place? So we'll see this in this uh, slide. When association, uh, when the solid associate to form a double molecules, a double uh, molecules. So every two uh, molecules of the, the solid will uh, associate together to act as a single as a single entity as a single entity in that case if the the, if the solid is associated in in a in a given solvent like uh, the solvent a so the distribution law will be uh, the root of ca over cb will equal to k uh, and uh, and if dissociation uh, uh, talk place in uh, in the liquid A, uh, the, the 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 rule will uh, be changed to C square A over C B will equal to two K. So you can observe uh, obviously here that association will change the formula and this decision will form uh, will also change the formula. So if you ignore the association, you ignore that this decision. The, the form the original form formula will apply which is ca over cb equal to 2k so based on the association and how many molecules associate uh, uh, together uh, or uh, based on the dissociation if two molecules uh, if one molecule dissociate to two parts or two uh, entities uh, we will uh, see that we, we take the square of the, the concentration in that liquid, uh, uh, the, the, the square of the concentration of the solid in that, in that liquid. So you need to pay attention for the uh, process of association and, and dissociation. And this is actually a very interesting uh, phenomena, the distribution or the, 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 uh, Distribution of uh, solids in two uh, uh, two immeasurable solvents uh, is very interesting uh, for uh, the extraction of organic substances from uh, the aqueous solutions uh, by adding uh, an uh, organic solvent uh, that uh, can uh, possibly also dissolve the the, the solid. Uh, and you, you make uh, god shaking to extract the, uh, the the material or the the, the, the solute uh, in the organic solvent that basically is more volatile than the the, 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 the water uh, or uh, the solvent uh, of the aqueous solution uh, and finally you take the the, the you see you, you separate the two immeasurable liquids uh, and in the 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 organic solvent, uh, the material can be uh, can be separated by a uh, simple vaporization process uh, to obtain the material in the pure in the pure form. Uh, and the examples for the organic solvents here are ether, benzene, chloroform, and carbon tetra tetrachloride. And coming to here, we we came to the end of this uh, lecture, and. Uh, Hopefully, uh, next lecture, uh, we uh, can cover uh, a new chapter, which is uh, equilibrium. The equilibrium, which is basically a, a thermodynamic uh, process uh, uh, that uh, exists in many, many of the uh, uh, the, the important uh, reactions. So uh, I will uh, see you in uh, class uh, next week, inshallah, uh, and see you uh, there. Uh,
uh, and uh, hopefully uh, we can uh, finish this chapter of equilibrium next lecture. Okay, I, I will see you next uh, week, inshallah. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.